Quoting from his writing, this time the same thing will be a transformer. It will not be economical. It is only to show how a transformer works. Ed has you use the perpetual motion holder as a transformer. By adding a third coil, it will not be very efficient, but will demonstrate basic transformer behaviors. Wind a coil of 1500 turns of insulated copper wire, size 18, on a spool less than 3 inches long, so that one and a half inch square iron rod can go on easy. Get two rods, one 3 inches and the other 6 inches long. If possible, have them from laminated iron. Get two radio blue bead 6 to 8 volt bulbs. Now connect one light bulb with the 3 inch coil. Put the coil without a core between the, two, the loose ends of the iron prongs. Connect the 6 inch coils with battery. Leave negative terminal open. Tap the negative terminal. Then you will see the wire inside the bulb turn red. Put the iron core in the coil's hole. Tap the battery. This time it will make the light. Why did it not make as much light as the first time? Ed wants you to make a third coil to induce a magnetic current in the coil by induction. The first pulse without a core on the third coil only produces a slightly heated filament in the bulb. And the second pulse includes a core in the third coil which produces a flash of light in the filament in the bulb. The battery put just as much magnets in those iron prongs the first time as it did the last time. But, as you see, the coil did not get the magnets. Now you see the soft iron has a lot to do to make magnetic currents. Magnetic currents, or if you want to call it electric current, make no light. We only get light if we put obstructions in the light bulbs. In the light bulbs, the wire is so small that all magnets cannot pass through easily. So they heat the wire up and burn and make light. If the wire in the light bulb has been as large as it is outside, then there would be no light. Then those individual magnets which are in the coil would dissipate in air. Both north and south pole individual magnetic currents which came out of the car battery and went into the transformer were direct currents. But the light in the bulb was caused by alternating currents. Have in mind that always there are two currents. One current alone cannot run. To run, they have to run one against the other. It states that with a core in the coil it receives more magnetic particles and the bulb lights because the thin filament provides an obstruction to the magnetic particles that flow in the magnetic circuit. You transformed currents in kind. Now I will tell you how to transform currents in strength. To make higher voltage you will wind the coil with smaller wire and more turns and to have less voltage wind the coil with bigger wire and less turns. The difference now is that this transformer makes alternating currents from direct currents and the power line transformers use alternating currents to make alternating currents. In this transformer the iron prong end remains the same magnetic pole but in the power line transformers the magnet poles alternate. In power line transformers, the current onlys are in motion, and in this transformer, the currents are in motion, and you are too. Ed is stating that the same amount of magnetic particles being induced in a smaller wire with more windings combines the magnetic particles pressure and raises the voltage, and when windings less turns with thicker wire reduces the pressure and produces less voltage. Its transformer, when you pulse the circuit, makes pulse DC, and the power line transformers use alternating currents to transform the AC currents to lower or higher AC voltages. In Ed's transformer, the polarity remains the same in the ends of the prongs, but in the power line transformers, the magnetic poles alternate at a predetermined frequency, and you are pulsing the currents in Ed's transformer. To summarize, one, Ed has you use the perpetual motion holder as a transformer. 
by adding a third coil. It will not be very efficient, but will demonstrate basic transformer behaviors. 2. Ed wants you to make a third coil to induce a magnetic current in the coil by induction. The first pulse without a core on the third coil only produces a slightly heated filament in the bulb and the second pulse includes a core in the third coil which produces a flash of light in the filament in the bulb. 3. Ed states that with a core in the coil it receives more magnetic particles and the bulb lights because of the thin filament provides an obstruction to the magnetic particles that flow in the magnetic circuit. 4. A smaller wire with more windings combines the magnetic particles pressure and raises the voltage and when winding less turns with thicker wire reduces the pressure and produces less voltage. In edge transformer the polarity remains the same in the ends of the prongs but in the power line transformer the magnetic poles alternate at a predetermined frequency and you are in motion pulsing the currents in edge transformer. We will be continuing the experiments in episode 10.